My name's Stuart Ladle, and I've got a pencil sharpening addiction. Pencil sharpening dominates Stuart's day, really from the first moments. When he wakes in the morning, he reaches out to his bedside table, takes the pencil sharpener and of course a pencil and, and starts to sharpen. And uh, there is uh, pencil sharpening all over his bed, all over his duvet, uh, floor of his bedroom. And there is the trail of pencil sharpening, the bathroom where he goes to he goes to clean his teeth, never wash, down the stairs. Uh, pencil sharpening in his cereal, pencil sharpening. Uh, in his packed lunch for school and their pencil sharpening all the way up the garden path as he leaves the house to begin his school day uh, and we <laughs> we're ready for him when he comes home because of course it's taken us most of the day actually to, to clean up the pencil sharpening that he's, that he's left, um, left the night before uh, so when he comes back from school um, it, it's the same procedure all over again it's, uh, it's pencil sharpening, pencil sharpening, pencil sharpening it, it, never, it never really stops until until he eventually uh, falls asleep at night. Pencil sharpening makes me feel happy, makes me feel safe. It just takes my mind off everything bad that's happening. It's just an escape. Well, there are several things that can trigger pencil sharpening syndrome. It can start with a dramatic incident, um, possibly you know, a pet dying, a pet person needs to compensate for the trauma they've experienced and very often this manifests itself in a behaviour and in this case it is sharpening pencils. So it can be um, collecting pencils, sorting pencils very often into length and colour. Well, we've been very worried about Stuart for a very long time. I mean, his school, um, his schooling has been affected by this very difficult condition that he's suffering from. And really, from quite an early age, he's been having big problems at school because uh, this, I suppose, it's an obsessive kind of compulsive disorder. And uh, this has uh, been getting in the way of his homework, the way in which he has to do his revision for his exams. Uh, it's just taking over his life in a very, very... Uh, really quite tragic way actually. I face prejudices every day with my addiction. Um, it's not something people are used to seeing. Um, people think, people call me weird, people call me crazy, um, people call me a freak, you know, but it's just hard to get through that because I don't know why people can't just leave me alone and let me do what I want to do. It's a very serious condition. If left untreated, it can turn very bad for a patient and really whittle away at, at your health. And in the case of, of my patient, I think we can see a definite deterioration. You can end up with arthritis, uh, RSI, that's repetitive strain injury, which um, is, is when the arms and, and legs are used in a certain way. Uh, it puts muscle stress and uh, muscle atrophy and Process. So it's very, very serious, can lead to all sorts of comorbidities and death. The doctor will, you know, help me and mean that in the future I can finally stop, but right now it doesn't look that way. Maybe I'll have a different doctor one day who will have a different way of going about things, but right now I just feel like it's never going to end. It's tough for Stuart, but it's tough for us but we as a family will try and do all we can to help Stuart to succeed in anything that he wants to do with his life, but uh, I think it's gonna be difficult, very difficult indeed.